Alright, talking about gear fourth in this one, Luffy's most recent gear technique he displayed after his training with Rayleigh on Ruskina, introducing hockey into this technique, and let me tell you something, it actually makes more sense than gear third, despite how kind of goofy it looks. I remember there was a little bit, ha, <laughs> Luffy's goofy. I remember that there was an initial fan backlash when Luffy first used it. Maybe backlash is too strong of a word, but it's like the same thing when uh, Frankie's design was revealed after the time skip. I know because it was such like a drastic change to the character's design, we were all like, I don't know how I feel about this. I feel Gear 4th was the same way. A lot of people were just like, it, it, I don't know what we were expecting, but we weren't expecting Luffy to turn into a giant bouncy ball with like tribal tattoos all over his body. Um, and also, I was planning on spacing these videos out, you know, like to do like one a week, but we've already done Gear 2nd and 3rd, so why not just finish it out so we can move on to other things? I feel like I've studied so much about the skeletal and, and muscular and circulatory system in these past few videos, I feel like I should be taking my freaking like test to be a nurse's aide or something. But anyway, yeah, so Gear 4th uh, utilizes Luffy's muscles, as I said in the last episode, uh, whereas Gear 3rd is Luffy blowing air into his bones to create his bone balloon. Uh, in Gear 4th, Luffy blows air into his muscular system, creating his muscle balloon, which actually makes more sense, because as the bones are, you know, 206 separate things that don't have anything to really connect them, you know, the air can't travel from one bone into another, um, your muscular system is found all throughout your body, so it makes sense how you can actually inflate that like a balloon because Luffy's body's made of rubber, uh, which would also give it insane because your muscle fibers are already, you know, designed to resist a certain amount of force, you know, and that's how exercise is supposed to work. You know, you exercise your muscles, keep doing this action with like a dumbbell, increasing the weight and different like workout regimens. I don't know. You can clearly tell that I'm a, I'm a major bodybuilder kind of type, but if you keep doing that in a certain way, uh, you'll actually increase the size of your muscles and you'll get stronger so the muscles have sort of a resistance that way but with Luffy being made of rubber this is increased to like it, the last the elasticity is created to a whole new level you know something that was already a little bit elastic to begin with um, so there's three types of muscles in the human body visceral muscles which are found in your internal organs that's how blood and things are like moved throughout your body visceral uh, uh, muscles are also found in your stomach um, then there's cardiac muscles which is only found in your heart but the stuff we're concerned about here and the stuff that Luffy utilizes is your skeletal muscles, the stuff that, as I said last episode, you know, it's the muscles that actually keep your, your bones together and, like, their muscle ligaments and stuff that connect the bones. So, uh, these muscles are found, you know, connecting your bones, which is going all throughout your body. So, Luffy, I just guess, bites down. Uh, he, he has to have good aim for this, I guess, because he's like, all right, I'm going to bite down this hard to go into gear third, but only this hard to go into gear fourth. Um, so, upon inflating his muscles, though, he takes on the form of Bound Man or Bounce Man. Um, and he takes the form of a, a, a giant bouncy beach ball, basically. Um, the main factor here, though, is that this gear heavily utilizes hockey. Now, Luffy's used hockey in gear second and gear third as well, but we've seen him go into gear second and gear third. We've seen him utilize those techniques without hockey. It's not a prerequisite. With gear fourth, we've never seen Luffy attempt it without hockey, so it's very clear that hockey might actually play a very huge role in achieving gear fourth, that he might not actually be able to do it without uh, activating his his hockey first. So while he was training on Ruskina with Rayleigh, you know, you had all these giant animals, like a giant lion, giant crocodile, giant, well, I suppose it would have been alligator, we already had a crocodile, and a giant um, uh, gorilla and shit walking around this island, and Luffy needed a technique to pack a lot of punch. He needed a way to take out these giant animals, so he developed Gear 4th, basically taking Luffy's power to, like, the ultimate, ultimate offensive, ultimate attack. You know, so when going into this form, Luffy's body's first thing is his elasticity increases to an insane degree. So um, even if he gets hit with an attack that would normally harm him, like Doflamingo kicked him in the side with hockey. So even though Luffy's made of rubber, a, a kick from hockey should be enough to, you know, actually hurt him. However, when Doflamingo kicked him, his elasticity was so great, and Luffy also had hockey, that Doflamingo, you know, was surprised by this. He's like, oh man, he's... It's, it's like kicking like a, like a really, like a vulcanized balloon, you know, it's like, it's, it's hard, but it's also, it, it also will relent, it's also elastic enough that it'll just bounce off. Now, of course, increasing Luffy's muscle mass also increases his strength, but I think there's more to it than that. I think the biggest advantage of Gear 4th is not the increase of strength, but it's the control 
and it's the elasticity that's the big deal. Those are the main advantages here. Luffy's able to do things with his rubber body that he was never able to accomplish before. Case in point, collapsing his fists into his body itself to inc increase the, uh, the recoil, the kickback. You know, so, uh, you know, Luffy has this giant fist, you know, his arms swell up to these huge sizes when he's in gear fourth. It can actually compress his fist down into his arm like a spring. And then when he unloads that shit, it's just BAM! You know, it just knocks, like, Doflamingo gets knocked clear across freaking Dressrosa. And he, he, Doflamingo, one of the funniest scenes in that fight is Doflamingo gets knocked all the way off the plateau, like, several miles away. Doflamingo gets back up and he's like, oh, damn, I got flung to the central section of the city. Damn, the recoil on that bitch. Damn. So, um, and then Luffy just continues to pound him. He just, you know, and, and that's another thing he can do. He can actually compress his legs into his body and then continuing, like, firing off his legs like pistons, kind of doing a, a, an artificial version of Geppo or, or Sanji's Skywalk, how he can just jet himself through the air. So it's like Luffy's more machine in this form than anything else, where he can just, like, fly using his legs to like pump the air and then he could just compress his arms in there and boom but uh like i said it also works in a defensive way because doflamingo wasn't able to directly damage him with like a kick as he was able to earlier even with his own hockey but hockey is the is the uh, idea here that provides control to luffy's body maybe that's why he developed this technique with hockey in mind because hockey is a a force in One Piece that, of course, doesn't exist in real life, although I haven't tried it. Has anyone ever been able to unlock Observation Hockey or Conqueror's Hockey? You know, some, someone needs to let me know if they figured out how that works. But anyway, um, hockey, you would assume Luffy would have good control over. Like, he could control it with his, his mind, I guess, you know? So, covers his entire body with hockey, or the majority of his body with hockey, his upper body, his arms and his legs with hockey, and then he can fire off his arm... Like normal, he can stretch it like his, you know, gum gum pistol, whatever, stretches his arm. But then utilizing hockey and having control over hockey allows him to actually change the direction of his hand and his arm, which he was never able to do. You know, he was never able to just, when he stretched, it was like one direction. Now, there were some techniques he utilized that could modify this slightly. Like when he was fighting against Crocodile, Luffy used a technique called gum gum shotgun. So basically what he did is he shot a gum gum pistol, it went straight, but then he like thwanged his arm and then it just like, you know, it bounced up and down and it left like a, like a, like buckshot, like a rapid fire thing that hit Crocodile. But that's not this. When Luffy fires off an attack like Culverian with his gear fourth, he can actually change the direction as if he's like, you know, forcing his hockey to stretch himself to left and then to the right and to the left and to the right, up, down, left, down, and has this entire like crazy net of his body that'll keep on going like a fucking heat-seeking missile until it finally connects with his target, not losing a lot of the force in the, in the process. So, do I think Luffy could go into Gear Fourth without using hockey? He probably could, he could probably increase his bounciness, but he wouldn't be able to move around very much. Maybe that's why hockey is useful. Because you see certain scenes where when Luffy's not attacking Doflamingo, he's just bouncing up and down. And he can't, con he even has to, he has to take off his sandals when he uses it. He's bouncing up and down and everyone's looking at him like, holy shit, you beat Doflamingo. Um, why are you bouncing up and down? Can you not, can, can you not control that? And Luffy's like, nope. Nope, can't do that. And then he has to rely on using hockey to, like, you know, compress his legs up and down at a certain rate in order to move around and shit like that because he can't can't actually stand too well when he's in gear fourth. Although, it's because of that overuse of hockey that actually is his detriment. That leads to the one main, uh, well, one of the two major weaknesses of gear fourth. The first one, as we found out in Dressrosa, is that you can act, there is a limit to your hockey. You can overuse it, at least uh, armament hockey anyway. We don't know about observation or conquers, but you can overuse your uh, armament hockey. And after Luffy is in um, this form for so long, maybe after, you know, he was directing his attacks with hockey, you know, using Culvery and all these times, you know, floating through the air and shit like that, eventually his body just gave out, you know, and he wasn't even able to move. Now, I don't think that means Gear Fourth itself has a time limit if he did not use hockey with it. I think that's just, you know, after he exhausted all of his hockey, Luffy just can't move his body and then Gear Fourth failed on his own and he just flailed on the ground, not able to move for like 10 minutes until he could use his hockey again. So that's one major weakness. You know, there's a, there's a crucial time limit working with here. And then the next weakness, as we found out in recently in Totland, was the, um, the, the, the calorie consumption. 
you know, using that much, you know, I, I guess, you know, using that much strength, you know, putting that much strain on your muscles causes a lot of uh, detriment there. You know, Luffy's body after um, consuming all of Cracker's crackers and going into his uh, tank man form, which was gear fourth tank, a full version, which I think he only called it that because he was full at the time. Luffy's pretty good at improvisation, I guess. And then after using that, his body, even after eating, like gorging himself, his body began to shrink rapidly from all the nutrients that it burns up using that you know because hey whenever you're uh, sitting there you know weightlifting you know that burns up energy in your body you know you have to make sure you eat right think of the insane levels that it gets taken to when luffy inhales his muscles i mean increases his muscle size to the degrees of gear fourth you know it just you wouldn't be that's another reason why there's a major time limit working with here However, to, to end it out, one of the major issues that you have to be worried worried about when dealing with your muscles and, and something that like weightlifters and bodybuilders are always very conscious of that do not they don't want to happen is a muscle tear. You know, ripping your ligament or something like that. Like something like that could, you know, if, if it's done at a horrible time, you know, when you're lifting a huge thing under your head, you could like kill you or it could end your career, okay? But that's the major issue that Luffy just doesn't have to worry about. Because muscles were already a little bit elastic to begin with and they were a little bit, you know, so with that being the case, Luffy's being so stretchable probably could not tear. Like, we saw that in the fight with Doflamingo. How's, I mean, in the anime, it was more apparent how he was increasing his arm to incredible lengths, you know, all around, to the point where it was like a giant net of Luffy's arm, you know, surrounding Doflamingo on all sides. You know, it, it was in that situation that his muscles still weren't ripping. You know, I think he exhausted himself because of his overuse of hockey, and he couldn't move, and he couldn't stretch, but after those 10 minutes were over, he could still stand up and move around. So, Gear 4 is honestly, I mean, it has its drawbacks with hockey, and it has its drawbacks with the calorie consumption and, and, and shit, so there is a limit. But in the long term, like, you know, like Lucci hinted that if Luffy goes into gear second too much, that can actually shorten his life. With gear third, you had the issue with Chibi Luffy. I mean, that's not a problem anymore, but it was an initial issue. If Luffy only goes into gear fourth for a little bit amount of time and then just launches an attack, it's very similar to gear third in that like, you know, it's like, you know, gear third, you know, you go into gear third to launch just one big, you know, attack to try to finish off your opponent. You know, Luffy does that with gear fourth, you know, as long as he's not in a prolonged battle with it, um, gear fourth is actually very useful. And as long as he has full stores of his hockey and has enough calories in his body, I think it's very useful. It doesn't provide a lot of negative effects in the long run, I guess I should say, uh, because Luffy's muscles just are unable to tear given the fact that he's made of rubber so um yeah that's uh gear fourth or my ideas on gear fourth what do you guys think of course there's a lot more stuff we have yet to see with this we've only seen use it luffy use it twice in the story um and i think that's the only one luffy has at the moment i don't think he has a gear fifth technique right now although he'll probably get it later on in the story i believe that when luffy truly out unlocks his awakening power which is going to be something completely different from any of his gears uh go check out this video i made about luffy potential awakening um that will be his gear fifth technique his his devil fruit awakening i think that's the next natural step but okay we're done we're done with over analyzing everything let me just let me just do a little note because you know we're at the end here so i'll just i'll just throw this on i'll just tack this on a lot of people will send me comments not a lot of people but a few people will always send me the inevitable comment of teching why are you even bothering trying to adapt this uh you know fictional story into reality why are you, you're overthinking it. Why are you overthinking it too much? It's fun. I'm like, okay, guys, it's entertaining. I know that this has nothing to do with actually adapting it to the story. Oda's not going to look at these videos and going to be like, maybe I should make Gear 3rd a little bit more realistic. That's not going to happen. That's not why we're here. I get it. He, br he breathes into his thumb and his bones get huge and boom. And he does it because why? Because it's awesome. That's why it happens. But I find it fun to sit down and try to... It's like a, it's like a brain teaser. It's like, okay, Matt, here's this fictional um, technique that can be utilized by this rubber boy in this story. Now, you know, obviously that would never happen in real life. But if it could, how would it work? And then you get to crazy explanations like Luffy's super bone in Gear 3rd or something like that. And that's fun for me. And it's also, you guys seem to find it massively entertaining. So that's why I'm doing it. I'm here to entertain. So don't think too much about me thinking too much into it. Is I guess what I should be saying. All right, that's enough. Hope you guys have a great day. This will be Teching signing out. Tomorrow, I'm going to an anime convention. So um, I'm probably not going to get a video out tomorrow. But I'll get some footage of that. And that'll be pretty cool. Probably get to meet Ian Sinclair. So if that happens, I'll, I'll let you guys know. I'll send out a tweet or something. All right, hope you guys enjoyed.